Hello and welcome to another episode today on the channel, the Potensic Atom. And this is an upgrade to the Atom SE, which is a great little drone, but it does not have a physical gimbal. This one does. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more and then we'll get into the flight test. Just like the SE, the Atom weighs less than 250 grams. Now that makes the drone compact, light and discreet, but the other benefit is you do not have to register drones that are less than 250 grams. And since it doesn't have to be registered, it's not subject to the remote ID rule that's gonna become effective at some point. If you wanna check out the Atom SE, I did a full and thorough review. So I placed a link to that in the description box. If you're not concerned about having a three axis gimbal, the SE might be a good option for you at that $220 to $250 price point. Now, Potensic sent me the Fly More Combo, which comes with three batteries, a 60 watt quick charging hub, and a carrying case. They're saying that you'll get 96 minutes of total flight time out of the three batteries. That's 32 minutes per battery. But as usual, we'll test that out to see what you get in real life. Now, just like the SE, the Atom has something called Surge Fly, which boosts the speed of the drone up to 16 meters a second in 2.8 seconds. And if it's anything like the SE, all that means is this sucker is fast when you flip it into sports mode. Are we gonna check that out? But of course. It shoots up to 4K 30 frames per second and has a three axis physical gimbal for stabilizing video footage. After reviewing the SE, this was the main feedback I have for Potenzik. Put out a drone with a three axis gimbal that's just like the Atom SE and you might have yourself a winner. And the Atom has something called PixSync 2.0. Well, the Atom has PixSync 3.0 for video feed transmission up to six kilometers or 3.7 miles. We're not gonna fly out that far. We're gonna keep the drone within our line of sight. But basically what that means is we should have a solid feed. We shouldn't get any glitches within the area that we're flying. So we'll pay attention and keep an eye out on that. As always, I'm gonna show you everything you get in the package. We'll take a close up look at the drone itself but first we're gonna put it up in the air. Okay, the intro's over, let's fly. Okay, we are going to do our first flight of the Potensic Atom. We're gonna do this together. We're gonna to power up the drone first. So we're gonna press and then press again and hold. And the drone does its startup chime. We're gonna power on the controller now by pressing and holding the power button. All right, now we need to get into the app. The app is called Potensic Pro. All right, so let's get into the Potensic Pro app. Now, one thing that I have discovered here um, that I don't like as much, and I don't think any of you will like as much, so hopefully Potensic is listening. I had to register, so I had to put in my um, email and password and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. I, I can't see why that's necessary. So Potensic, please don't require people to register. What is the reason for it? Well, I think I can come up with some reasons for it, but uh, people don't like that. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get into the app. Um, you can see here from the drop down, you can select from their various drones. We're flying the Atom here today, so we're gonna select that and we're going to enter device. Okay, so as you can see, we have a couple of things going on, and this happened the last time when we um, did our review of the SE. There's a firmware upgrade that needs to happen or update needs, that we need to do, so we're going to do that right now. Click on to update, and you can see how quickly that's moving. Okay, just going to speed this up. I'll let you know about how long this, uh, this is taking, but I'm going to speed this up. 
so you don't have to watch this. Okay, just heard the, the drone chime. So it looks like it's uh, accepting the update. And you can see here on the screen um, what some of those updates are. Optimized user experience of quick shots, optimized known issues. And this is a really, really good sign, guys, when um, a drone company, and this was the case with the SE as well, um, Potensic seems to really be supporting their drones and making um, improvements. Uh, that's just a really, really good sign. Okay, the update is finished. It did power down the, looks like it powered down the drone and the controller. So we're gonna need to power everything back up again. Okay, we're in the app. As you can see, the first thing it is requiring us to do is to do a compass calibration. We can't even fly the drone without doing that. So we're gonna hit start calibration. Let's see if I can increase the volume of that. All right, and we have to rotate on the horizontal axis, which we're gonna do. And I'm keeping an eye on the screen. Now we're gonna do the vertical axis, pointing the drone, the head of the drone up, and we're just gonna rotate. And we are ready to go. Okay, so let's take a look at the app. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, oh, there's a, a message here in the lower right that says, before flying in a low temperature environment, preheat the smart battery. Okay, it's about 50 degrees today, so I don't think we need to uh, do that. But it looks like it's just giving us some tips down here in the lower right. That's pretty cool. Um, but the one thing about Potensic is the app is really well fleshed out from what I remember. Uh, let's see what we've got here. It looks like we've got 17 satellites already. We've got 97% on the battery. That's saying that that's going to give us 31 minutes of flight time. I'm going to move quickly so we don't lose too much uh, of that battery life. Let's tap on the map here and see what we get. So we get a full map here. Looks like uh, there's waypoints and things like that, I, I believe, on here. But we'll, yep, this looks like there's waypoints. So we'll check that out here. But let's, uh, let's just take a quick breeze around here. Okay, you can switch from auto to manual. We'll switch back to auto. And let's go into the settings and see what we've got. Okay, you can see here we have a beginner mode where you can limit your height and distance. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're not beginners, but if you are, definitely take advantage of that. We want our units to be in feet or in imperial uh, measurements. This is where you have to change the speed. Now, I wish there was a way to change speed either on the controller or within the main uh, panel in the app, but you have to come in the settings here to make those changes. I'm gonna flip it over to video for now and we'll switch it over later. Um, you can uh, determine what happens when uh, the drone loses signal from the controller. Uh, I'm gonna keep that on return and you can set the return altitude. It's set at 197 feet. I think that's good, we'll leave it there. And you can set a virtual fence. Um, we don't need that. So I am going to, oh, I'm not sure what that means. When I took that down, it took the return to home altitude down. I'm gonna put that back. So I guess I'll leave that as is. I'm not real certain what that means. I thought that that would mean it's going to limit how far out that we fly um, and work as a geo fence so if you set a particular distance you won't be able to fly any further than that um, hopefully that's not what that means because we don't have beginner mode turned on um, but if you turn that on you should be able to set those limits and then distance limit I'm gonna take that all the way up well actually no limit is what I want to set <laughs> okay we don't want any limits and flight safety tips, I'll leave that on. Now here's something that's really cool, battery information. So these are smart batteries in the, uh, in the drone uh, that you get, and you can see the type of information that you get. We've got 95% uh, percent left, uh, the temperature um, is 18 uh, degrees Celsius, you can see the current and voltage and the cycle count. That's really, really cool uh, on what could be considered a budget drone.
level table with the bottom facing up. Oh, geez. Yeah, I don't want to do that right now. We'll do that. We'll do that some uh, other time when I'm actually at home and, and can do that carefully. Um, remote control calibration. Not sure what that means either. Okay, we won't belabor the point here and get into all of those details, uh, but I just want to show you some of the things that you can do in here. Let's go to control. Okay, control stick mode. You can change that. I'm, I imagine from mode one to mode two or model one to mode two is what they're saying. Whoops, let's get back in there. Um, you can turn on headless mode, which I never use. You can change the mat max pitch speed so that should affect the speed of the drone and how um, how steep of a pitch it will give you give you when you uh, push forward and let's see gimbal mode okay you can switch that from the uh, stable mode to FPV mode and FPV mode will basically um, the gimbal will move with the direction of the sticks or the direction of the drone so um, we don't want that. We want stable footage today. And then the camera. Oh, wow. We can set our white balance. It's set to auto white balance right now. I'm going to switch that to 50. You know what? Let's just leave it in auto. Let's leave everything in auto right now. Uh, but you can see some of the things you can do here, which is really, really cool. Let's go ahead and format the card. That is a brand new card. You can add GPS coordinates to the photos metadata and about. Um, you can see what model this is, uh, the firmware version, so on and so forth. Okay, that's everything. Um, let's see, can we change the resolution? Absolutely, that looks familiar. <laughs> uh, we can uh, make some adjustments to our exposure. This is a really, really fleshed out app, you guys. So you can see the different frame rates and resolutions you can switch between. We can go down to 1080 and go up to 60 frames per second if we want it. We're just going to shoot. Oh, wow. Could you see that uh, crop? See how, how far it crops in at 1080, 60? We're going to stay in 4K at the highest resolution, 4K 30. Okay, guys, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but let's uh, let's take another breeze through here to make sure we we know everything going on in the app here. So you can see this button here where you can switch between photos and uh, video. I'm going to switch it back to video. This icon here um, allows you to enter the intelligent flight modes, um, but we can only check those while we're in flight. So. Uh, we will be doing that. And then down in the lower right here, you can see um, it will allow you to review your photos in video. OK, guys, let's go ahead and do our auto takeoff. We have 20 satellites. I know and just a word about that. You want to make sure you have at least seven satellites before you launch. And it looks like the drone will give you an indicator here on the left. You see where it says take take off permitted. If you don't have enough satellites, it will it will indicate that that you don't have enough satellites. The importance of that is for return to home and also the stability of the drone. So if you don't have enough satellites, you've launched a drone and you fly out and you try to do a return to home, it won't know where to come back to. All right. So just it's just a safe thing to do to wait before launching. Wait until you have enough satellites. All right, I'm talking too much. Let's launch the drone. We're gonna press the auto takeoff button and what do we have here? Check the battery installation. Please check whether the battery buckle pops out correctly. Improper installation of the battery may cause the battery to fall mid-flight. Oh wow, that actually is a really good pre-flight uh, check that you should do. We definitely don't want the battery falling out. And what they're saying is this little divot here should be out. Make sure that that is out and the drone, I'm sorry, the battery is secure in the drone, which it is. I think we're good to go there. That's actually a really a really good tip. All right, we're going to confirm that. Okay, now let's try this again. We're going to click on auto takeoff. 
I'm going to start the video. Wow, that feed looks amazing. And that's one thing I was really impressed with with the SE was the quality of the video. Okay, uh, the thing I was not impressed with as much was the electronic image stabilization because it did not stabilize on the horizontal axis. So as you move the drone from right to left, the, the video footage picked all of that up. We shouldn't have that now because we have a three axis gimbal. Now you can see the drone is pretty stable. I like to let my drones hover for a little bit before I take them up just to make sure everything is okay before we go taking it up in the uh, in the air. Let's uh, do a little bit of a walk around here so you can see what the drone looks like. It is a little bit windy today so uh, hopefully we don't have any challenges. This is a small lightweight drone um, but it should handle this wind no problem. Okay the very first thing we are going to do we're gonna test this gimbal so let's take it out and watch what I'm doing with the sticks and watch what the footage is doing. Left, right, left, right, wow, <laughs> rock solid rock solid you guys okay then we're gonna do back forward back forward okay potensic looks like you nailed it <laughs> looks like you nailed it i think we have a winner here let's do that again let's get a little bit more aggressive left right left right left right left right left right that footage looks great wow Wow, good job, good job, Potenzik. All right, let's go ahead and take the drone on up. Let's do some flying. We are in video mode. Okay, I'm getting some freezing on the screen. I am surprised by that. So this was definitely not the fault of the drone. Just look at that crispy, crispy footage, y'all. But no, it was actually because I had the Wi-Fi turned on on my GoPro. Just know that Bluetooth devices like your Apple Watch or Fitbit or Wi-Fi enabled devices like a GoPro can cause interference in the video transmission from the drone. All right, no harm, no foul. Let's get back in here. Okay guys, we are back at the scene of the crime on a different day, but with the GoPro uh, Hero Black 10 here, I had to turn off the Wi-Fi, and I believe that is what was causing me the problems. The other thing I could have done is I could have just turned on airplane mode, and that, that may have solved my problem. But anyway, it was cold that day. Uh, I decided, you know what, let me just regroup, we'll come back, and do this another day so here we are we should not have any of those connection issues i don't have any of those devices on me the wi-fi is turned off on my gopro we should be ready to get in the air but as you can see since we last flew or since we were last out here we have another firmware up upgrade to do so again this is another awesome thing about potensic they are constantly updating their drone. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, looks like we're ready to get right in the air. So we're gonna do that. We have 19 satellites and we're gonna have a flight clock in the upper left hand corner so we can keep track of our total flight time. Uh, right here on the screen, it says we have 95% on the battery, which will get us 31 minutes of flight time. We will see uh, about that. I'm gonna go ahead and start the camera. And we're gonna do an auto takeoff. Try that again and swipe to the right. All right, and we've got the Potensic Atom back in the air. And I'm gonna let it hover for a second here. Fairly quiet drone. And small, nice and indiscreet, I think. 
Okay, so far so good. We're shooting in 4K, 30 frames per second. All right, and let's go ahead and test that gimbal out once again. And I don't think we're gonna have too many problems out of that gimbal, you guys. I think they, uh, I think Potenzik nailed that. All right, let's go ahead and fly this baby. We weren't able to do so uh, last time. We're gonna do it this time. Let's fly. And I do have it in the video mode, which is equivalent to uh, like a tripod mode that DJI has. Now today, um, <laughs> we, um, we don't have as much on the trees as we did last time. The trees are a little bit more bare. So I'm up there about 187 feet. And we're doing well. Looking good. Video is stable. All right, I'm going to park it there and let's go ahead and take a photo here. Stop that video. Switch over and bring the camera down a little bit and snap off a photo. And I'm going to turn, snap off another one. And let's start the video again and keeping the drone in my line of sight. We're just gonna fly ahead and we're gonna turn and head back. Encountering strong winds, something we see from DJI. And you can see what's happening with the horizon and that's because it is fighting that wind. It is very windy today, guys. Oh, look at that. Those are some nice colors down there, huh? Okay. Uh, but this drone has enough uh, flying velocity to fight those winds. I'm pretty confident in that. That's full stick now. And we are flying about 13 miles an hour. And we will switch that over to the normal mode and also the sport mode and see what kind of speed we get. Uh, if you remember, if you saw my review of the original Potenzik SE, you know that this drone can move. <laughs> this drone really cooks. And there she comes. And I'm gonna actually take a photo here. Looks like we have some, still have some trees out there with some uh, pretty colors on them. Just pan a little bit and just trying to snap off some photos here. And it looks like the uh, camera is trying to correct itself. Let's pan that camera down and maybe take a photo here. See if I can get uh, some colors in here. Panning is very smooth, you guys. Uh, there's nothing very pretty. <laughs> I think there was a tree here. We'll get that tree. How about that? All right. We'll bring the camera back up. And as you can see, you can tilt the camera up. Looks like about 20 degrees. We'll bring it back to level here. And I'm getting that uh, strong winds warning again. And how about another photo? Why not? Okay, let's bring the Potenzik back over to us. We can see that the gimbal is um, performing as uh, we would expect. Once again, uh, that tilt on the horizon, that is due to the uh, 
the drone fighting that wind, it does correct itself. I would not uh, hold that against it. So like I said, uh, we're talking gusts up to 25 miles an hour, and that's gonna be even more significant the higher you get up. You see how the drone is tilted, see that? Uh, trying to fight that wind and keep its position in 3D space here. Okay, what else? Uh, let's get the uh, video back going. And let's see what else we want to do. Um, how about we go ahead and flip this to normal mode? Which is probably the way we want to fly today anyway, so that we uh, so that we have the most power to fight those winds. But let's just fly it around a little bit. That's about half stick. And that's full stick. And we're flying about 21 mile an hour there. 22. Great drone, you guys. Great drone. Not even a question. I didn't have the video going. Let's start it now. And we'll pull back. And you can see how much slower the drone is flying as we bring it back. We're actually against that wind. It's a crosswind is what's happening. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is turn it around and uh, bring it bring it on in that way but yeah it's definitely fighting the wind up there you guys and that is going to shorten our flight time as well kind of hard to be choosy on when uh, when I can come out and fly drones with the way our weather is, uh, it literally rained for three weeks um, straight. I mean, we had a day here and there where it didn't rain, but I mean, it rained and then we got snow on Halloween and it's just been few and far between. And now that we're on the other side of uh, the daylight savings time adjustment, we have one hour less of uh, daylight to be out here to fly so this day is as good as any <laughs> to be out here doing this so okay so bear with me you guys all right let's try that again we're in normal mode I'm gonna stop the video I'm gonna restart the video and let's fly that's full stick and you can totally see that drone getting kind of pushed a little bit. 22 mile an hour. And I'll go up to about 120. We'll take it up a little more. Like I said, I think it can handle it just fine. All right, so that's normal mode. All right, and we're gonna bring it back and we'll try uh, sports mode. Let's go ahead and get that picture. We've got some pretty colors out there. And after we check out sports mode, we are then going to start checking out the intelligent flight modes. There's that strong winds warning again. And you can see the reduction in speed. So uh, that's what I um, that's what I'm getting at. Um, when you're flying in windy conditions, you, you really have to pay attention to you know what direction you're flying the way I'm positioned uh oh yeah it's it's blowing that gimbal because it's so windy 
but the way I'm positioned, um, I have, it's, it's more of a crosswind for me. So, um, that's what we're dealing with. And it is definitely kind of blowing that drone. Because it's, it's all of a half a pound, you guys. Doesn't weigh much. All right, how are we doing on battery? So 44% saying we have about 12, 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes left. All right, I am going to get into the uh, sports mode. Actually, that's what we were gonna do. Please switch to more small, you gotta be higher. I remember that. Make sure my GoPro is not gonna slide off my head. Yeah, you gotta be at least 26 feet up before you can switch to sports mode. All right, and there was a, you saw that note uh, that came up, that warning that said, uh, basically what it's saying is when you switch to sports mode, don't expect the gimbal to perform as well, right? Um, which that is the case with a lot of drones um, that have three axis gimbals on them. But I am going to try to fly against the wind this time. And uh, we're gonna see how fast this sucker will go. Let's see, I believe that is against the wind. Let's take it up a little higher so we can clear any obstacles. We'll take it up to about 100. All right, let's start that video. And let's go ahead and push full stick. That sucker is moving. It's fighting that wind because that is not its full potential at all. I'm going to turn it around and we should do better um, heading back this way. Yes, sir. 33. I think I saw 33 there. 33 miles an hour. We'll take it. All right, I'm gonna flip this back to normal mode. Absolutely no breakups. All right, let's go ahead and get a photo. And like I said, I'm not gonna fly very far away today, um, but in my experience with this drone, the connection is very, very solid. Okay, very, very solid on this drone. I'll take another photo. All right, we'll get the video going again. And let's see if we can fly back. Should be okay to do that. Here she comes. Yeah, zero connection issues, um, and I don't expect to have to have any. Based on the range, the advertised range that this drone can get, uh, again, similar to what the Atom SE can get, but this one actually has the updated uh, technology as well. Looks like we're down to 22% battery. Once again, the flight clock is going. I'm not sure how, how long we've been flying, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not as long as we would get on um, a more calm day with more calm winds. The drone is just fighting, fighting that wind, guys. So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in the other battery once we uh, ex you know, exhaust this one. Whoops. And then we'll start testing the intelligent flight modes. 
But you see how much that drone is jostling around and how stable the footage is remaining? That's great. That's what you want, right? Now I wish I could uh, kick this thing into speed mode at this, at this height so we could really see, see this thing move. Um, but uh, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be up at least to here. Let's see, 26, that's 26. Okay, let's do this. Make sure I'm clearing any obstacles. Let's back up. We're gonna flip it to sports mode. Oh, guess I gotta stop the video first. I am at 26 feet. I'm at 26. Okay, let's go a little higher. Now I'm at 27. Low battery, okay. Ah, darn it. All right, so you can't get into sports mode with a low battery. All right, guys, I'm gonna, um, well, you know what, let's keep flying so you can see what the total flight time is. But let's keep flying it. Aha, we have reached low battery and it's uh, going into its return to home. That's actually one thing I didn't test, but uh, this is the fail, fail safe. I did not initi initiate this. This, uh, this engaged automatically when it reached its low voltage. And I had it set to uh, return to home altitude of 200 feet. And it ascended to that height. And now it is returning to home all on its own. We're at about 10% on the battery. And let's see what it does and let's see how accurate it is. I usually will fly, fly the drone out and uh, initiate return to home manually. And I think I'll go ahead and do that. It's off by quite a bit. But the good thing is you can adjust which I'm doing now. That is quite a bit off, you guys. <laughs> That's quite a bit off, right? We took off from like somewhere in here and it was starting to land out there somewhere. Okay, so total flight time is up on the screen. Um, I'm gonna pop in uh, a fresh battery and we're gonna test the intelligent flight modes out uh, and we'll get you some more information about this drone. Okay guys, we're back in business. We're gonna go ahead and launch the drone. Got a fresh battery now. And the first thing I wanna do actually is kick it into sports mode. All right guys, let's, uh, let's take it up 26 feet. Take it up 26 feet. There we go. And uh, just want to see what this thing looks like when it starts booking out. <laughs> All right, let's flip it over to sport mode. Start the video. Make sure we are not going to run into anything. Let me check. Let me check our flight path. All right, let's go ahead and full stick ahead. Let me flip this into normal. And let's check out the intelligent flight modes. Let's see what we've got here. So we're gonna click this button here. Okay, so we've got pull away, we've got rocket, we've got circle. And look what's happening. It has automatically identified me as the subject. You see that uh, plus sign there? So all I have to do is tap on that and look what happens. Wow, you guys. Okay. <laughs> this is DJI esque or some of the more advanced drones. This is the type of stuff you see 
on the more advanced drones. And I think we can now put Potenzik in that conversation, right? Nobody's beating DJI right now, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But as an alternative, and we could look at pricing and things like that and, and what you get and all of those different things. Everybody doesn't want to get a DJI drone, right? You might want a Potenzik and you get a lot of the same features and so far it's doing them well. Let's check and see what, what this does. So you can see, you can change the uh, height and distance. That's familiar. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it at 98 feet. And this time it's not as nice of a shot because the sun is kind of behind me, so I'm backlit. Um, but just for safety's sake, we're gonna have the drone point this way and fly away from us. All right, we're gonna hit go. Let's see what it does. Okay, quick shocks activation fail. When locking the target, the gimbal pitch needs to be, oh, maybe I need to be up higher. And it's not recognizing me because I'm thinking because of that sun. There we go. All right, let's try this. There we go. Three, two, one. There it goes. So if you're familiar with quick shots on the uh, DJI drones, DJI Fly app, um, this is this is similar to that. Let's see if it comes back once it finishes its automated flight pattern. Yep, it's coming back. Pretty cool. All right, and I don't know if we're gonna try all of these, but let's try, let's try a couple more. And I am gonna come around this way now. So I think we're gonna do orbit. Maybe we do orbit next. Um, yeah, see, it's gonna pick me up better this way. Let's see what we've got. We've got rocket, or we can do rocket here. Is this just gonna go up? We can do rocket here. And we'll have a better image. Okay, I wonder if I have to go up. Target loss, let's do that again. And let's hit go. Yep. Now you see the X here. Um, let's try something. I'm gonna move the sticks and that will cancel it. That's important, right? If you see yourself getting ready to hit something and you wanna cancel that quick shot, that, or I call it a quick shot, that intelligent mode or flight pattern that it's doing, uh, just give it a stick input. That's important. I'm glad that uh, it's that easy. You don't have to tap on anything in, on the screen. You can tap that X, that red X, but it's easier just to give the stick an input to cancel that out. All right, let's try that again and let it do, let it do its thing this time. We're doing a rocket. There it goes up. It's not gonna go very high, 98 feet. So let's go ahead and get back in the air so we can finish checking out these intelligent flight modes. And I also wanna do a manual return to home since the uh, the uh, fail-safe return to home performed so poorly. Not sure why that is, but you see where we took off. I'm letting the drone hover. It is, has established the home point. So we're gonna fly it out and um, initiate return to home manually and see where it returns to. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Why not? Okay. So let's take it up. And I'm just gonna fly it on over here. Just a little ways, not far. Okay, so we're out there about 400 feet. Let's go 500. All right, 
and we're going to hit return to home. Okay, how do we do this? Do we hold down the button? Let's try this button. Okay, so it gives you the option to land or return to home. We want to return to home, so we swipe right. And let's see what happens. Okay, it went up to 200 feet once again. And it turns to face the home point. And it is booking to get back. <laughs> Very nice image I'm seeing on the screen, guys. See how smooth that uh, camera uh, tilts? Okay, looks like it's doing better this time. Oh yeah, much better. So not sure what was going on with the, uh, the fail safe. Um, return to home but this is more of what I would have expected and anticipated there it comes yeah almost almost spot on so yeah that's what more so what I would expect um, out of a drone like this and um, yeah, I think I'm comfortable with that. Okay, so we've got circle and spiral and boomerang. Let's see. Let's do follow me, guys. That would be perfect for us right now. And from what I'm seeing, it looks like this is going to perform very well. Okay, so you can set a time limit on uh, how long it's going to follow. I'm going to go ahead and move that to uh, infinite. All right, and hit go. And once again, I'm not up high enough. Try it again. Go. There we go. It counts down. And looks like it's going to start the uh, video camera automatically. All right, let's see how this does. It is tracking me. It has me. I'm well lit. And um, if I didn't mention before, just know that this drone does not have any kind of obstacle avoidance. So the obstacle avoidance is you. You have to be uh, very cognizant of where you're flying, what obstacles around you. The drone will not avoid anything, okay? It'll fly right into a tree or a pole. Uh, if you, you know, have it follow you into the path of one of those things. But check it out, you guys. I think this is really solid. Follow me. Wow. Very nice. And this is true follow me. It's not, it's not following the, um, the phone or the controller. It's, it's following me, the subject. Okay. So you can draw a box around su a subject and it will follow that subject. Subject, subject, subject. <laughs> Check it out. That's cool. Okay, let's see what happens when we walk towards it. Uh, I don't know. It didn't back up and it lost me. Okay, let's try that again. It could be a lighting thing. Let's try that again. <laughs> There we go. We're hitting go. And let me see how low I can bring the drone. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't want you to be very low to the ground. So about there. Okay, I'm gonna walk towards the drone and it does not back up. That might be something to look at Potenzik in, uh, in an update. That's, uh, you might want to look at uh, allowing the drone to continue to follow a subject as the subject walks towards the drone. And you can see that it, uh, it's not going to uh, allow for that. 
but based on what I'm seeing, <laughs> it uh, doesn't seem like it would be much for you guys to, uh, to update the drone to have it do that. Very impressed. Very impressed with what I'm seeing here. It's following just fine. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, let's see. I'm kind of in a clear area here now. Let's stop that. So we've done follow me. We've got the other intelligent flight modes here. Let's go ahead and do circle. And let's see. I'm not sure what these numbers are. Not sure what those numbers correspond to, but I'll I'll select one for now, and I'll keep an eye on this, on what the radius is going to be. Okay, pretty close. Let me see. Can I make adjustments? No. Once it starts, you, if you give it a stick input, it's going to cancel it out. Let's try it again. I wonder if it's, if that's speed. Oh put it on two this time <laughs> see what happens there it goes yeah I'm not sure what those numbers correspond to we'll see if there's something in the uh, manual that may explain that but it could be speed but I'm, I'm not sure we'll try three next time there was a one option two option and three option yeah, that works. That works wonderfully. What I have seen on the more budget level drones. Uh oh, it's lost me there. This is what I've seen. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say that it it tends to follow a point rather than the subject. But I think it just lost me again because of the lighting, maybe because of where I am. In position with the sun but it is what it is you see what it's doing and this is what I'm I'm used to seeing but it's usually with budget drones that aren't actually tracking the subject it's because they're uh, tr tracking a point right or um, the uh, con the controller or the phone and it's at a hundred percent now and stopping okay yeah that was unsuccessful let's uh let's try this again i am very well lit uh oh let's go back oh we're at 20 percent battery so we'll, we'll likely get to see that um emergency return to home okay let's select me Okay, I'm selected. I'm going to go to three now. Again, I'm not sure what that signifies. We're going to hit go. Oh, not high enough again. Keep forgetting that. There I am. Camera tilts down to keep the subject in the middle of the frame. And now let's see what happens. You can see that the... Um, highlight the box goes away i'm not going to move all right but that box went away so maybe when it goes into this circle it switches to just following a point i don't know let's see looks like it's doing better this time maybe i moved last time i'm not sure didn't think i did but all right, that's what I would have expected from this. If it's actually tracking the subject, you should. this is what you should get out of your orbit. So if you want to orbit a building, um, some kind of object, um, I don't think I have really have anything here that I could do that with. But, you know, if you wanted to follow a tree, you know, um, a tree. Oh, here we go. All right. Let's start that video camera too. We're gonna walk over. It's going up to 200 feet. That's where I set the uh, return to home altitude at. And let's get on over here. See where it wants to land. Like I said, no sensors. 
No obstacle avoidance sensors. Oh, much better this time. Much better this time. That's what I would expect. There you go, you guys. That's what you want to see. Not sure what happened last time. But uh, I haven't touched the sticks at all and the drone reached its low voltage. The emergency return to home fail safe kicked in. And I think we took off from up here somewhere. That's, I, I'll take it, okay? That's what you wanna see. We're gonna do boomerang, select the subject. I bet I need to go back, or maybe not. I'm not sure what the one, two, or three signifies. Let's hit go. It's right up on me now. Okay, let's watch it. Keeping my hands ready if I need to stop this. Is it gonna clear that tree? Uh, didn't look like it was gonna clear that tree, you guys. <laughs> All right. But I think that's a good demonstration nonetheless, right? You can, you can see how safely you can do these. All right, let's try, uh, I think the other one was Helix. I'm doing my own manual orbit now. Okay, let's, uh, let's do spiral, and that's gonna be an orbit that goes up. And we'll have to keep an eye on this one as well to make sure it's not going to fly sideways into anything. We'll at least let it start, and if we need to cancel, we'll cancel. But there it goes, it's moving pretty slow right now. There it goes, so it's gonna orbit, gain altitude. Looks like that one's staying pretty tight on me. I'm gonna watch out for this pole here. I think we're good. We're gonna clear that. Ay caramba, yeah, we did, <laughs> okay. All right, so that's roll. And that's done, and it should come back to where it was. There are waypoints as well. Let's see. Um, there we go. So let's just plot some points. One, two, three, four, and five. And uh, let me take it. I actually am going to take this up. I'm going to hit go. Okay, and we've got automated, an automated flight plan here. Let's go ahead and bring up the screen. I'm not even recording. Let's start recording. Okay, I'm not giving the drone any stick inputs. It's doing this all on its own. That radius must be wider than I anticipated. Yes, it is. So point one is way out there. So that's point one that it just flew out to. Now it's going to waypoint two. You can see what's happening there on the screen. Beautiful uh, feed there. And there's waypoint two. Let's see what it does when it turns. Does it pause? Or does it keep moving? It pauses and turns. Okay. All right. There's three. And I think I'm going to actually stop it there. Because I think we get the idea here, right? There's three. And we'll let it. We'll let it start to head to four. And stop it. Whoops. Yeah, we're gonna stop that. Okay. 